What's up everybody? I hope you're doing good. It's not so beautiful today. It's very cold, but it's okay. We can manage. So what's happening right now? Poland has blocked South Africa delegation traveling to Ukraine on a peacekeeping mission at the airport for over 24 hours. This has never happened before with a diplomatic body. So basically, South African delegation was leaving South Africa via Poland on the way to Ukraine on a peacekeeping mission. Because they could not fly from South Africa to Ukraine, they had to go past Poland. So they landed in Warsaw at the airport and they were blocked by the police of Poland, the Polish police, and they were treated in an unprofessional way. Let's watch. One tonight, for four hours to get in here, she was still upset. It had never happened that we have still upset anyone with a diplomatic passport just to get us out of here. Right? Now, they say um, we don't have permits. We have permits. The only difference is now they say we can't bring a copy of a permit. We must bring the original. Now, some of us have, have original permits. Right? The embassy um, here printed permits because they thought it's not necessary to, to have um, the originals here. Right? Now, all of a sudden, we must have originals. They are delaying us, right? They're putting our, the life of our president in, uh, in jeopardy because we could have been in Kiev um, this afternoon already. So as you can see, Poland has blocked the South African delegation traveling on a peacekeeping mission to Russia and Ukraine for getting off the airplane for 24 hours, 120 people. I'm asking myself how did they manage to go to the toilet? Yeah, must have been very uncomfortable. They say the South African delegation had undeclared dangerous good on board. Undeclared dangerous good. And this is a, a delegation that's equipped with diplomatic passport. You don't check them like that. You, you do not do that. So they say the journalists who travel to Poland on route to Ukraine were stuck in Warsaw Airport with President Cyril Ramaphosa protection units during the standoff. Obviously, as you know, if a president is traveling somewhere, his security uh, department go first to go make sure security is taken care of, make sure everything is safe for the president before he lands. In a video release by the reporter on social media, Ramaphosa's head of security, Major General Wally Road, pointed to racism and sabotage as reason for having been prevented from disembarking the aircraft. I don't know if if you've experienced this before, um, I'm sure you have glimpses or ideas when you come from a certain continent and you go to a different continent and there is uh, differences in opinion and discussion, it can go south very quickly. And I can imagine this is exactly what these people experience. 24 hours stuck in an airplane in something that should have been very smooth. I mean, these are diplomatic bodies. What could be the reason? Rod, who is uh, the, the chief of uh, Syria Ramaphosa security, say the Polish government was placing Ramaphosa Posa's life at risk, adding that this was the first time he had encountered such situation while having a diplomatic passport. Yes, he is right. Rhodes said the Polish police had said their South African counterpart did not have the permit for entry in the country. So when you have uh, the diplomatic passport, you have immunity, basically. This is how it works. Uh, let's say the diplomatic body in whichever country, even if they knock somebody on the street and it lies without, yeah, they will not get arrested. That's the humanity you get with diplomatic passport. So you, you don't go through the same processes. They don't check your stuff. They don't look into your bag. They don't do that. You, you, you cannot do that. That's international law. So you can understand why this man would say this is the very first time he experienced that. <clears throat> so let's see what would the reason be. First of all, African nations, uh, a couple of African nations have taken the initiative of trying to bring peace between Ukraine and Russia since the big countries seem to be unable to do it. So Zambia, Senegal, Cote d'Ivoire uh, has envisioned a form of first phase of negotiation between Russia and Ukraine. So the delegation was going to Ukraine via Poland to go and have a sit down with the Ukrainian president to discuss what can be done to free the situation. You know, what can be done to bring peace between Ukraine and Russia, which is obviously a very positive thing. You see, that's the issue with Africans. We are too loving. We are too loving. And that's perhaps one of the reasons why they came to Africa very friendly. Remember, they came to Africa very friendly, preaching us the gospel. Oh, we're going to bring you the gospel and the gospel of paradise. And all of a sudden, we lowered our God. And it ended up where? In the Caribbeans. We ended up in the Caribbeans, working as 
You know what I'm talking about. Up until today, then neo-colonization, then colonization. We are too good. Sometimes you need to let people deal with their own issues and find their own solutions. Doesn't matter whether they're going to break or not break. It's none of our business. Anyway, so African nations came together and said we are going to Ukraine to try and find solutions. And uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa, with his team, gearing up to go to Ukraine, now encountered this humiliation. This is humiliating. And it's very clear why the Polish people would do that. We know Poland is a member of NATO, a military alliance between 31 member states, and has been very critical of Russia's invasion of its neighbor Ukraine. And South Africa has maintained so far a non-aligned stance on the war, and knowing its trade partners in Washington. So maybe this is not even Poland, okay? Maybe this is somebody somewhere in Washington, you know, dictating, who knows? Stop the airplane, block them, slow them down, humiliate them, so they can feel how we feel. So Poland is very attached to NATO and the US. They've been very frantic toward Russia. And South Africa, on the other hand, has been very supportive of Russia, which is absolutely normal. They are partners. They're all part of BRICS. They work together. They have been working together for many, many years. So this is just a way to say, you know what? Since you cannot go through Ukraine by yourself, you have to go past Poland. Now we're going to show you a little bit how we feel about you without necessarily saying it very openly. You know, you, you bump me, but you don't really bump me. You, you bump me, but you say, oh, sorry, I didn't see you. But I bumped you. I hurt you. What can South Africa do? What do you think South Africa should do at this very moment to make itself respected because this is this is obviously uh, an act that's premeditated. The reason they advanced, they say the South African delegation did not have the paperwork. They didn't have the paperwork to come through Poland with dangerous goods. Dangerous goods obviously are guns that the security are supposed to have anyway. Protecting a president of a republic. Does that make any sense to you? How am I going to protect my president as a diplomatic body if I don't have guns? And obviously they had long discussion because everybody on board had visa Polish visa. So in order for you to have Polish visa, you must have been through the old processes. So why do we get visas then land in Poland and encounter such disrespect? Getting left in an airplane for over 24 hours, men and women and all that stuff. I mean, we don't even know if some people were there with conditions and needed special whatever that is. I mean, we don't know people's state. Does that even make any sense? So we know that Washington is not very happy with South Africa at the moment. And this has been further exasperated by Pretoria's incoherent message on whether it will host Russia's president Vladimir Putin in August during BRICS summit uh, or not. I mean, South Africa has not said anything whether it's going to host Vladimir Putin, even though they have a mandate of arrest against Putin. Will South Africa host Russia's president? And this week, we know four senators of the Republic of the U.S. came forward. Um, they wrote a letter saying that um, South Africa should not host the U.S.-Africa trade, uh, AGOA, uh, since South Africa stands its beneficiary to Russia. And they say it's not a good thing to do for the United States. The United States has also accused South Africa of loading onto a Russian ship uh, weapons in December. So there are many things. There is, uh, is Putin coming to South Africa? Uh, is South Africa should not host a Goa summit next coming? U.S. also accusing SA of sending guns and weapons to Russia. So there are many things going through this. Now, what do you think South Africa should do? Because obviously this is disrespect. I mean, which president of Europe would be happy that he comes to a country where they stop his airplane for 24 hours or his security personnel's airplane? Who would accept that's disrespectful? I mean, shouldn't things like that only last like a minute, like one phone call and that's it? I mean, if a normal human being would have issues at the airport and find solution within 20 minutes, how about a diplomatic body? Shouldn't it just be a phone call and that's it, finish? Or was this a message, a clear message, saying to you, we're going to show you that we're not happy with you. Even though we're not going to say it openly, you know, in a very cowardly way. We're not going to say it openly, but we're going to show you in the way we proceed with you and the way we treat your things, the way we process your situations, that we're not happy with you. Let me know how you feel about this. It's always interesting to know your view. God bless.